Nope, nope, not even a little bit. There ain't no water gonna sit on that cover. Hi there folks and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marino. Well, I read a bunch of your comments on the boat cover video and I agree with a lot of what you folks say. So what did I do today? I wanna do a little update on this. I might make it its own video or I might make it a part of another video, we'll see. But you guys have asked, do you guys, do they make these things in a T or a cross versus a T? And yes, they do, of course. And I bought five of them today. And I'm going to see if I can get a T up here, not a T, a cross up here in these top parts. So when I put the cross supports and the longitudinal, you know, the backbone down the middle together, it's actually more one cohesive unit. Now I'm going to do all this without gluing it together. And we'll see how much more sturdy this is going to be because I, I'll be honest with you, putting this on without that being very sturdy locked together, it had a tendency to wobble a little bit. But once you got it cinched down, there wasn't a problem. So let's go ahead and get this cover knocked off of here and let's see what we can do. As you can see right there, it likes to fall down easy. So... And when I did have my original cross supports that were printed out of PLA, it actually made the top bar pretty rigid. And uh, I think there's uh, definitely room for improvement here. And as you can see, the, the whole idea behind this is the cover comes off easy and the frame stays more intact. Now look at that garbage. That ain't worth a poop. So I think these T's will be the secret. Now the good news is, I didn't glue any of this stuff together. So I can just slide this right off. Now, the cool part is, I gotta find my cutters. Now this one, these particular arches already have an arch in them. They're sitting here like this with an arch already in them. I'll do some testing here in a minute once I get this put together to see how well that cross will handle the stress of bending it when it starts off as a straight pipe. Now to find my cutters before it gets too dark. Well, I found my cutters. They were right where I left them. In the same container. I, whoa. Now it's a clumsy mess, right? Let's go ahead, we're cutting two of these. <laughs> In for a penny, in for a pound, right guys? There ain't no messing around here, Jack. I'm kind of coming back here to kind of get a reference of center on this. I can get it somewhat close. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. It's better work or I just screwed up $16 worth of pipe. That won't be good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this together without any glue. Just because you never know when your boy here might change his mind. But so far, I like how this is working.
Oh, I can already tell. That's so much better. Now, for you guys and gals that are old enough, or maybe you watch it on Nickelodeon, maybe not Nickelodeon, but you remember the Beverly Hillbillies and old Jed Clampett? And when he really liked something, you know he'd always say, Wee doggy. And you know what? I'm having a wee doggy moment, moment right now because I'm, ex I'm more excited now than I was when I first put this together. Booyah, because the T's is the place to bees. Oh yeah. Look at me go. You know, when you was a kid, and if you're fortunate enough to play with a Lincoln Logs, or I think there's another one called Connects maybe, or an Erector Set, oh, this is what you were practicing for. You just didn't know it. You were learning life skills. Oh yeah, look at that. You know, once that's glued together, I mean, even not glued together, it's pretty dang solid. I am tickled with that. Oh, it's going so fast. I can hardly keep up. I can hardly keep up. I'm keeping this in real time for you guys. Because you need to honestly see how easy this is going. And here again, no glue. Right now, no glue. I can glue it together later. Here I go spending a bunch of money on PVC stuff. But now, but now. As Ed Bassmaster would say, would you just look at it? Just look at it. Uh. Did you see how that worked? They didn't see how it worked? Well, did you tell them to look at it? I mean, did they just look at it? Oh, mercy. Look at that. Now, if that was all glued together, I could easily undo. I'm going to try to do it without it glued so you guys can see. I could easily do one of these. Oh, yeah. And go set it on the ground. And then when I got back from fishing, I do one of these numbers right here. Pick it up off the ground. There it is. Amazing grace. How sweet is your boat cover? Oh man. Oh man. That is going to be cool. Look, I can sit here and slide this around. And this isn't even glued. It's not glued. Oh, baby doll. You know, so, a person shouldn't get this excited about a boat cover, but 
Wee doggy. I got one more T. And I guess I'm gonna try something here. Let me back you folks up. You know, I bought, it's getting zero dark 30 out here. I'm hoping this shows up really well. I had bought, or I made two extra ones of these gunnel pieces, so to speak, because why? I didn't know, you just never know. Because here's what I was doing before. I can actually shove the whole boat around doing this. This is some tension here, folks. Serious tension. Yep, I just cut that piece like that. I sure did. I'm gonna go ahead and now here's what you'd be dealing with if you made brand new ones, because this is tight. Just make sure nobody's on the other side of this so they don't get walloped in the face. This may not be dead down the center, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. Whoa, look out! And you guys are gonna see why. Now, this isn't glued or anything. Let's just see if it'll take what I'm getting ready to do to it. It did. Now, it did elongate these pretty bad. So, yeah, it's starting to give way. So you can't do that. You can't do that. And I'm not sure if you glued them, they'd even do it. But what you can do with this material, which is spectacular, is you can heat this up. I've, I've actually got my gas stove downstairs where I've taken this stuff and warmed it up and put a pre-arch in it. And then you let it cool down and it stays. This stuff is designed to be heated and bent and then it'll do what you want it to do. So with that being said, I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I do. I know what I'm gonna do. Now I'm just blasting through about $16 worth of pipe for you guys, just because my watchers and the people that subscribe to me deserve it. I'm gonna use one of these other tees that I had that slide around and stick on here for now. And what that's gonna do for me is I'm gonna be able to go ahead and use this one. And that's what I was afraid of originally is that that T wouldn't take that stress very well. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put this loose T on here like I just did. Let's see here, let's go about right here. We're going to go ahead and put this on here. The nice thing is this fixed one will hold it just like that. And what I'll do is I'll let this sit under the cover for a week. We got a, we got a 90 degree day tomorrow. The sun's going to be blazing down like crazy on this thing. And this right here, we'll go ahead and take that arch. And then after it takes that arch, I'll put that T in. Now let's see if I can one hand man, one hand man, I got two hands, single handedly put this cover on without this falling on me like it did the first go round. All right, where's the nose of this thing? Hot. Hip, where you at, hip. There's the back. All right. Some people ask me where I got this cover. I'll leave a link in the description down below. I got this one off of Amazon and uh, it actually turned out to be a pretty nice cover, but I bought it two feet longer than I wanted because I wanted to be able to cover my motor as well.
All right, we'll go ahead and hook the, I'll hook the nose on. We'll just get that popped right there so I know where center's at. Oh gosh, we're just about done. Real time, real time. Only thing I cut out is me looking for my, I'm gonna cut out is me looking for my, uh, Oh, that's so sturdy. It just stays. Yes, yes, yes. Woo! Golly. You know, no freaking participation trophies for this kid growing up. He had winners and he had losers. And people learned what winning was all about. Look at this, look at this. So when you do something really cool, you can recognize that you're winning. Look at that, would you look at that? I can pull that thing back right over my cover, over my motor. Oh, son, look at that. This isn't even cinched down yet. And I'm not using my seat anymore. Now I still can, if I want to, I can pull my seat right up here. Just, well, I let it sit there all summer and do nothing. Look at that, good God, that is, oh, this is ridiculous how good this is working. Look at that. Now eventually I'm gonna take my straps, I'm gonna put some hooks on my trailer. So these are just a hook, instead of wrapping around my frame like this. Nice thing about this trailer is the frame is really easy to get to. So we'll just snap this back down. This is real time. Give me some of that real time. Now this thing's just cinching down so nice. You know, there's one person that left a comment and goes, how strong you think that would be? I live up in Canada and we get about three feet of snow that'd be sitting on top of this boat. I'm like, that's a lot of weight is what I'm thinking to myself. And here in the Midwest, we don't get quite that much snow, but we do get some. And you know what? Something tells me this will actually handle it. I touched some seriously nasty grease back there on that outboard. How to, well, that's nasty. I'm trying not to get it all over my everything. Holy doggy do. Look at that, look at that, look at that. I know we're losing light fast, folks, but Thank God this camera's got a big lens. Now I'm pretty sure I could fold that chair down and just let that front just come all the way in without having that dip in the middle, but water is not gonna sit on that at all. Nope, nope, not even a little bit. So yeah, this is the boat cover revisited. Looks like I could pull this down a little bit. Oh yeah. Looking good. There ain't no water gonna sit on that cover. You will not bail this boat out on the water or off the water. That's all there is to that. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed that. I literally, literally, yes, literally ran out of daylight. I started this at seven o'clock. Sunset at seven o'clock and if you guys are out there any of your hunters know that you've got about a half hour after sunset Is the last shooting light for your bow hunters or your shotgun hunters or any kind of hunters you got a 30 minutes after sunset before your lights gone. I literally got done with this. It is now 727 I had very little light left out there um, But I hope I'm gonna go Upload this thing and hopefully it turns out good. If it turns out good, you'll be seeing it, of course. But uh, 
I think I just cost myself some more work simply because that works so well for the T part there that I'm gonna have to go do that on all my other cross braces and my other boats because man, that stays together so nice and tight. As you saw, I lifted the whole thing off and it's not even glued together. So once it's glued, look out, it's gonna be amazing. So a few of you had the suggestion of using those T's. I already had it in my mind, but I was worried about the uh, when it's originally a fresh bend. And I was right. It wouldn't have taken it on the original fresh bend. Would it have broken the glue or adhesion loose? I don't know. If you guys want to give me some comments down below to see what that would take. But like I said, that conduit is really nice because it's designed to be heated up. They actually make heat chambers for these things, for that plastic conduit. So you can actually put it in there, heat it up, and it becomes very malleable. And you can move it around. And once it cools off, boom, back to rigidity again, right? So I'm going to just let the sunshine do the work on that front one. Once it's probably after tomorrow, maybe two days from now, I'll be able to go over there and snip that front one, put me a T in there, boom, bang, bang. And we got all of them looking alike. But as you saw, by even having that one that slides back and forth, locked into one T, held the other one in place so it didn't slide around, that cover, that was the easiest cover put on I've had yet to date. That just went on. Well, I shouldn't say that. My other PLA ones that I printed out went on just that well, but as you can see, they deformed before. This is going to withstand the heat for the long run. And uh, I, don't, I won't have a, a worry in my mind to leave that boat out in the weather all winter if necessary. Uh, if I don't have room to put it underneath one of my lean-tos or something, uh, because I know that cover is going to hold it. Uh, I had the same kind of situation in my big 23 foot. It sat out all winter with snow on it and everything else. It held up, the cover held up, but I'll leave a link below to that cover where I bought it on Amazon, which one I bought. Like I said, I bought it two foot longer than recommended because I wanted enough length to reach back and cover the motor. Now, some people think, oh, the motor can just sit out in the weather. No, these hoods, all these hoods on these motors out here, I can tell which ones have been sitting out in the sun, weathering, and you can tell the ones that had covers because they still got shine. They still look, you know, they don't look 50 years old, even though they are. They look like they're 10 years old. You guys should probably tell from the excitement of my voice how I'm happy with how that turned out. I'm dropping this video out real soon. Uh, you'll probably see a midweek video versus a weekend video in this case. Uh, you guys, have, like I said, you guys are some of the greatest uh, viewers a guy could have out there for his channel. Uh, some of you asked some questions about the uh, bolt that was broken off in the manifold. Well, it's still in there. I'm still working on it. I have a feeling what I'm going to end up doing is pulling the boat over here by the shop, get my welder out, and weld a nut on the end of that. I might grind it back so it's half as long too, maybe almost flush. But I'm going to weld a nut on the end of that thing. And what that does when you weld a nut on it, and I've done this many, many years, is it'll take that heat and go down in that bolt and make that bolt expand a little bit. And then when it starts to shrink, it breaks that bond that it has with the, the parent metal there and you can just back it right out. My goal is to do that. I'd really rather do that than try to fine center. I've done it many, many times, but fine center that bolt, drill it, run a tap in there, and hopefully the tap finds that original thread and peels that original um, leftover thread out of that thing so that you have a good thread. But typically what will end up happening is you don't get it quite as tight and the bolt will be a little looser than you want. And then you're better off just throwing a helicoil or a thread insert in there anyway. But I'm going to try to avoid that. I want to keep it, at, I want to keep it as original as I can, so to speak, uh, without any helicoils. I, I'm, I put helicoils where they belong. Anyway, uh, don't be afraid to ask me some questions. I respond to as many comments as I can. Uh, sometimes it gets a little hectic trying to respond to all of them. Uh, somebody said, like my last intro that I had on my video with the way I did it. And they said, hey, it was a great idea, whoever came up with it. I'm a one-man band here, folks. It's just me and my camera and a bunch of lonely outboards. This is who I get to talk to. You guys get out there and have some fun. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. There again, I had something that wasn't quite broke, but I fixed it till it... I had to break it, right? I had to cut it in half. Anyway, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. Get out there and have some fun. Enjoy life, and I'm out. Oh.